Okay, in this uh, video, we're going to talk about how to find derivatives involving the natural exponential function. And so I'm going to talk about two formulas here. I'm going to give you the simple rule, the derivative of e to the x. So this is pretty straightforward. If you want to take the derivative of e to the x with respect to the same variable x, then that derivative would simply be e to the x. Okay, so for instance, if I wanted to take the derivative of this function that involves 5e to the x, well, I know to take the derivative of 5e to the x, it would just be 5 times the derivative of e to the x. And since the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, that would just give me 5e to the x. And I threw on another term just to keep us honest. So then if we want to have subtracted, then we take the derivative of 3x squared, which you should all know, by now, the derivative of 3x squared is just 6x. So that's how we find the derivative involving a simple uh, natural exponential rule. Now, but what happens if this exponent is a function of x, where u is a function of x, rather than just x itself? Well, in that case, then the derivative of e to the u, this involves the chain rule, so we get e to the u times the derivative of u with respect to x, or if you prefer, you can just say e to the u times u prime. Okay, now, so let's take this same function, except instead of it being uh, e to the x, let's say it's going to be e to the x cubed. Well, then when I take the derivative of this, I get 5 times the derivative of e to the x cubed. Well, based on what this formula tells me, the derivative of e to the x cubed is e to the x cubed times the derivative of x cubed, and we know the derivative of x cubed is simply 3x squared. And so we get 5e to the x cubed times 3x squared, and of course the derivative of 3x squared is still 6x. And then the last step, I just went ahead and multiplied the 5 and the 3 together, and that gave us 15x squared e to the x cubed minus 6x. So let's look at some examples. I'm not going to focus on the simple rule because honestly that's just too simple. So I'm just going to focus on rules that involve the um, chain rule version. So if we have 3 times e to this trinomial here, then the derivative of that would simply be 3 times the derivative of this, which is e to the u, where u is this trinomial. So, as we saw for the formula there, we know the derivative of e to this trinomial is just e to this trinomial times the derivative of this trinomial, and so the derivative of this trinomial is simply 10x minus 2. So we would have 3 times e to that trinomial times the derivative of that trinomial, which is 10x minus 2. And that's all you do there to get that derivative. Now, this one, uh, both of these need to be rewritten. This is e to the square root of x, and this is e to the 1 over x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write square root of x as x to the 1 half, and I'm going to write 1 over x as x to the negative 1. Okay, so now, uh, how do I find the derivative of e to the square root of x? Well, you just, you just write e to the square root of x, and then you multiply by the derivative of square root of x, which would be 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And so that's the derivative, that's the first one. Then to find the derivative e to the 1 over x, you just have e to the 1 over x, and then times the derivative of 1 over x, or x to the negative 1. And taking the derivative of this using the power rule, you would get negative 1 x to the negative 2. And then in the last step, I just rewrote it by eliminating my negative exponents. So here I just moved the x to the negative 1 half into the denominator, and it became 1 over 2 times x to the 1 half, or 1 over 2 times square root of x, because x to the 1 half is square root of x. And then here, uh, we know that minus x to the negative 2 can be written as minus 1 over x squared. And now let's just write these as a couple of fractions. I can put e to the square root of x on top, and so I'll get e to the square root of x over 2 square root of x. And then here, put this on top, and I'll get minus, because we have a minus there. So I'll get minus e to the 1 over x over x squared. 
and that's the derivative of that function. Let's throw in a couple of other rules here. Uh, this one is actually going to be, we're going to apply the general power rule. So here I have, um, you can see I have inside the parentheses, I have e to the x squared minus x. But all of that is raised to the fifth power. So the first rule I would apply here would be the power rule. So using the power rule, I'd have 5 times all of this raised to the 5 minus 1 power, which would be to the fourth power. But remember, we learned that on the general power rule, you then have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So I have to multiply by the derivative of e to the x squared minus 1. So now let's find the derivative of e to the x squared minus 1. Well, we know the derivative e to the x squared is simply e to the x squared times the derivative of this x squared. So the derivative of this x squared would be 2x. So that's where the 2x came from. The derivative e to the x squared is e to the x squared times the derivative x squared, which is 2x. And then, of course, we know the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1, so that would be minus 1. And so that's how you can solve that, where you have an exponential function raised to a power. What if your problem involves a product where one of the factors involves uh, this exponential function? Well, then we can use the product rule. So you know that we have right here, this is the product of x squared times e to the q x cubed. And so using the product rule, I would say, well, I would take the first function, which is x squared, and then I multiply by the derivative of this function, and so the derivative of e to the x cubed would simply be e to the x cubed times the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared. Okay, so that would be the first part of the product rule. And then the second part of the product rule is where you take e to the x cubed, which is this right here, and then you multiply it by the derivative of the first function. So I have to multiply it by the derivative of x squared, which is... 2x. And so simplifying this, I get 3x to the fourth times e to the x cubed plus 2x times e to the x cubed. And of course you could factor out the common factors here and write this a different way, but generally you would do that if you were trying to find um, the zeros of the derivative. But you could do that if you wanted to. All right, so that pretty much uh, covers finding the solving problems that involve the, the derivatives of the natural exponential function. And again, feel free to subscribe to my channel if you find these helpful. Um, in the next video, I'm going to talk about what if I wanted the derivative of a function that is a different number raised to the x power. In other words, what if it's not e raised to the x power, but what if it was something like 2 raised to the x power, or 2 raised to a function of x power? Okay, well, we'll discuss different bases. That's what those would be, different bases. In other words, we'll discuss bases other than e for exponential functions in the next video.